I think that having a clear data management plan in research and also to help you try and um, complete your PhD within the three years or as close to three years as you can manage, um, I think it's, it's very helpful to know um, what you want from your data. So to sit down and think about what sort of data do I need, where will I get it from, what might be the risks or problems in me getting that data, um, and um, to then be able to write down um, how you're going to make use of that data can be very helpful because you can refer to back to it later um, as you're going through things. I probably didn't do as much data management planning as I could have done. I did a very good sort of project proposal for this. I did an initial research proposal. I potentially would have probably benefited from spending a bit more time about what data sets could I use and how I was going to use them. I knew roughly where they were, where they were out there. I didn't at any time spend perhaps enough time explicitly sitting down and thinking, well, what might I use that sociodemographic data for, for example, with what and how am I going to use it and is there too much? And I spent a lot of time exploring lots of data perhaps a little bit haphazardly at times, and I think possibly I lost a bit of time from that. I got some interesting information out of it, but I think if I'd sat down and actually planned out a little bit more about how I was going to use the various sort of explanatory data I was going to put alongside my crime data, my vandalism data, I might have been a little bit more efficient about how I'd use my data. I was very good about planning how I was going to get my sensitive data and thinking about that, perhaps not so good about planning out um, how I was going to use the, the data I was going to use alongside it. And I think there are huge advantages in planning out both of those things. I also think as part of your data management process, um, data management planning process, there can be a value in doing some exploratory spatial data analysis if you're working with spatial data in advance. So actually spending a bit of time, if you've got, say, some data you can get hold of easily, spend a little bit of time working with that data, looking at what kind of scales it's available at, looking at what kind of border data you can get. If you've got a particular study area in mind, look at the various data borders that you've got for that area and how they match, and a bit of ex building in a bit of exploratory analysis with data that's easy to get, perhaps before you chase the data that's hard to get, could be quite useful because it can throw up just all looking at data that's readily available can sometimes throw up issues that you may find up when you've got to get hold of more sensitive data. So I think there's a role for um, almost sort of prototyping or exploratory data analysis or other planning, um, looking looking at what's available to you as part of your, your planning process. Um, and finally, if you've got a management plan, be prepared to be flexible with it. Some things will happen that you don't expect to. So I see data management plan as a, an ongoing per, um, process. You may need to revisit your plan. You may need to rewrite your plan. Um, you may need to add addendums to your plan um, because things will change, challenges will come up that you don't expect. And when that comes, you may need to kind of revisit how you're thinking about holding your data. So I think that some form of um, planning and consideration of how you're going to um, look after your data, um, how are you going to publish your data, what might be the issues with that, and finally, how long are you going to hold on to your data and what are you going to do with it at the end? Because that matters too, because if you've got very sensitive data, are you expecting it to sit with your university for years and what would happen after you've left? And you need to think a little bit about that side of it too. So this data that you're collecting, what will you do with it at the end of the project? Um, and perhaps a final thing also associated to that is what are all the things you might want to do with this data that you've collected? Because one of the issues you can sometimes run into, and it's certainly I have something I ran into my master's process and was wary of because I'd run into my master's process when I was PhD processes. If you get to the end of the project and you want to use the data for something but you haven't already got permission to get, use it for that purpose, it can be much harder to get it at the end of the project. If at the start of the project you think, well, mm, I'm a PhD student, I might want to publish some papers, I'm going to write a PhD, I'm going to present at conferences, I might even write a book. Um, so if you at that point when you get your data say, I might use the data for all these purposes and be clear about that at the point you get your data, then you're not going to have to go back later on, perhaps when people have moved on. I mean, one of the things I found with the police is that personnel change very, very fast. You might struggle to find the same people again. So if you've got someone signed off that says, yes, it's fine for you to use the data in these ways, 
then you, you don't necessarily need to go back later and say, oh, well, I've, I've just been selected, I've got a chance of giving a paper at such and such a conference, can I use your data? And then struggling to find someone to, to get hold of, to, to get permission for that. Or, worst case, I'm saying no. Um, if you thought about that in advance as part of your management planning process, it means that when you get to the end of your project, not only have you hopefully recruited in a timely manner, but you can use the information you've got for further on in your career.